Good day, generals, and uh, welcome back to another Call of War breakdown. So this time we are looking at foot infantry. Now these are a very important and very versatile unit. So we're going to have a look over their strengths, weaknesses, and also some strategies that you can use to really use these infantry units to the full. So when I refer to foot infantry, I'm talking about infantry that isn't motorized and isn't mechanized. Of course, motorized and mechanized infantry are all arguably superior to foot infantry when it comes to force and speed, but the foot infantry is always um, needed for long drawn out wars. As you know, infantry is the backbone of every army. So I heard a man once say, you know, you can fight a war without infantry, but you cannot win a war without infantry. And I think that's very true. Now, I've seen it time and time again in Call of War battles where people try using large amounts of anti-tank and tanks, but if they lack a proper infantry corps, they cannot really get very far. So <clears throat> let's have a look at some of the stats of infantry. So infantry is great for defending from other infantry, uh, especially other like uh, similar infantry units, so other foot infantry. You can see their defense puts them well ahead of an attacking infantry unit. Now, against armor, they aren't so great. I do not recommend ever using infantry to attack armor head-on. But there are times and places where using infantry to defend against armor is actually advantageous. Against air, they have a decent defense. It's enough to deter most fighter planes. Um, bombers, perhaps not, but you won't get harassed by fighter planes. Buildings, they are pretty good. Um, they will do some damage to uh, buildings that you capture, though. So your infrastructure, your industrial complexes, barracks, and airfields will take a bit of damage, but they won't be destroyed completely if you use infantry to capture them. So on terrain, this is where infantry shines the most. They have the same health and the same speed. Sorry, not the same speed, just the same health they, and amount of attack power on plains, forest, mountain, and urban. So whereas tanks and units armored will have disadvantages in urban and mountain terrains, your infantry, your foot infantry, will not. So this is where they can rarely shine defending urban areas and fighting in the mountains. Um, their speed, they're not very fast. They're faster than militia, but they are not extremely fast. If you want an increased speed, you would have to advance to motorized or mechanized infantry, which I would recommend doing anyways. Okay, so that's basically the overview of infantry. They're a simple unit, but they are very, very very necessary for any fighting general. So what are some instances where we would use infantry? So your number one use of infantry is to take out anti-tank and anti-aircraft um, units, enemy anti-tank and anti-aircraft units. So a tank will destroy infantry, but infantry will destroy anti-tank and anti-tank will destroy tanks. So it's basically a paper scissors rock when it comes to tanks, infantry, and anti-tank. Of course, it isn't always that simple, especially in different terrains, but that's a good way to think about it. So, you want to definitely always send infantry in first to take out if you know that there is an anti-tank or a tank destroyer um, in front of your armor advance. So you send in the infantry first. Um, as I said before, if you're defending mountains or urban areas, Definitely post infantry in there. Your tanks will be pretty much useless in urban and mountain, and they'll be extremely slow as well. So I'd recommend putting some infantry units in and perhaps backing them up with artillery and anti-tank. So that's where you would use that in an urban environment, definitely. Um, you also want to use these to take out artillery units. So perhaps if your armor and your main force is pinned down, definitely use infantry 
to go around and take out the enemy's artillery. And also, it's great for defending fortifications. So you want to always defend your fortifications with infantry, or at least a few uh, units of infantry. Now, when it comes to accompanying different divisions and different um, groups of units, you'll want to have infantry, foot infantry, or at least, if not foot infantry, another um, motorized or mechanized, you'll want to have them accompanying uh, most other units, especially tanks, because tanks will be very vulnerable to an anti-tank or a tank destroyer. But if you have some infantry with them, you should be able to uh, overcome an enemy, especially if you're attacking. You definitely want your infantry moving with your tanks. You even want your infantry uh, guarding your anti-tank and your tank destroyers just to make sure no other enemy infantry comes at them. So basically, spew infantry all over your divisions. Make sure there's infantry everywhere, um, except for perhaps attacks that are specifically needing, um, say, armor or you know anti-tank divisions. But for general purposes, always have some infantry with your uh, tanks and anti-tank. So infantry are relatively cheap. They're not extremely expensive. So you should be able to produce them most times. Um, uh, we talked about militia in one of my other videos. That would be a step down from infantry if you're unable to produce them. But if you can, I'd recommend always getting infantry over militia, and I'd recommend motorized over foot. However, we'll discuss motorized in another video. So that's basically an overview of how you can use foot infantry in your everyday attacks. They're a very versatile unit, or never take them for granted, and always use them as a backbone of your army. As I said before, you can fight a war without infantry, but you cannot win a war without infantry. See you all next time, and remember to like this comment, uh, like this video, leave a comment, and uh, subscribe. Thank you all very much.